Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in this video I'm going to talk about PHP design patterns, uh, particularly the factory pattern. Now the factory pattern has a few different variations, two of which I'm going to talk about today. The first being the simple factory pattern and the second being the factory method pattern. Now the factory pattern gets its name because it involves having a class that's purpose is to create other objects. So as a factory is a place where things are created in software, the factory pattern involves having a class that's purpose is to create objects. So that is why it's named the factory pattern. Now, if we take a look at a class here that I have written that is named motorcycle, we can see that this class takes in a couple of arguments and it implements a method named get make and model that simply returns the make and model. Now, what I could do is create an instance of this class anywhere I wanted to use it. And while that could be fine for some simple classes in an application that is not particularly uh, large or complicated. If an application grows or is fairly large, that could be a quite inefficient way of doing things. And one of the reasons being is that if I want to make a change to this class, maybe rename it, refactor it, make some sort of change to it, I will have to go and change it every everywhere that I've instantiated that class, I'm gonna have to go through and make that change, whatever change is required. And if you're if you've created lots of instances of it, if you're using it, um, if it's quite prevalent throughout your application, that is you can see why that would be uh, not a clean way of doing things and not particularly scalable or manageable. A much better solution is to have a factory class. Now a factory class will begin with the name of the class that its job is to um, to instantiate followed by the word factory. So we can see here this is the class that we will be instantiating within this factory class. So the name of this factory class is motorcycle and then it has the word factory appended to it, um, both words being upper camel case. And we can see here it has one static method named create, which simply returns an instance of the motorcycle class, passing in the make and model. So now if I had to make a change to the motorcycle class, if I wanted to rename it, if I wanted to make whatever, any change I had to make to it, I only have to make that change within the uh, this factory class. If it involves a renaming or, or anything as such, I just have to change it here. So we can straight away see how it makes things much more manageable, much more maintainable, much more scalable, and just is a much cleaner way of doing things. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, those are the problems that it solves. It solves if any change is made to the class that it is instantiating, if it's changed, renamed, replaced, etc. We only have to change it in one place. Also, if instantiating the class is a fairly complex job, so if creating an instance of this class is not trivial, then any logic that that involves or any other code that, that involves only has to be um, implemented in one place rather than implementing it over and over again. So one final thing we'll do is we'll just have a look at this uh, file here, which um, creates a few instances of this uh, a few instances via the factory class. So we can see first it passes in Kawasaki as the make and Ninja as the model. Then Yamaha as the make, R6 as the model. Then Suzuki as the make and GSX R1000 as the model. 
and then it just prints the value using the get make a model method for each instance so if we just have a quick look at that here we can see this is the output from that code that we just looked at Kawasaki Ninja, Yamaha, Kawasaki Ninja, Yamaha R6, Suzuki GSX R1000. Now we're going to move on to part two, and that is the factory method pattern. All right, so just quickly open up some uh, some files. Now, um, this pattern involves having multiple um, classes and not knowing which one needs to be instantiated ahead of runtime. So essentially it uses um, incoming data that is only available at runtime to determine which class to instantiate. So in this example, we have a few different variations of the motorcycle class. First, we have we have motorcycle Yamaha, motorcycle Honda, and motorcycle Ducati, and we do not know which one we need to instantiate it until um, uh, we only know which one we need to instantiate at runtime because it's going to use data that's, that is passed in, so uh, most likely appended to the URL, and that information will determine which one of the classes we instantiate. So instead of repeating uh, code in multiple places we uh, use a factory method so we have a, a factory class that will instantiate the class that we need so we here we have a create method similar to the last example but this time it does a little bit more first we've just got some error handling so it checks that type is not empty because of course it needs a value and then it will check if a class name exists. So like in the last example, the factory had the name of the, in fact, actually the name is a little bit different here. In the last example, the factory had the name of the class, which was just motorcycle and then factory appended to it. But in this example, we, the names are motorcycle uh, Ducati, motorcycle Honda, etc., and the factory class has the first word, so just motorcycle, and then factory appended to it. So it has the same name as the other example, actually, but um, it is not just it is, does not contain the full name of the class that its job is to instantiate, of course, because it um, because in that case it would uh, have because the class that instantiates varies. So it just takes the common part of each class, which is motorcycle, as we can see, and it appends the uh, word factory to the end of it, and the uh, combination is upper camel cased. So we can see here, we're checking, does the class exist? If it does, then we're returning an instance of it. If not, we're throwing an exception because the uh, motorcycle type that is passed in here has not been found. So, um, yeah, as well as this allowing us to use incoming data to, to determine which class to instantiate, it also um, solves a problem of code duplication, tight coupling. Um, again, if we make a change to uh, um, the classes we only have to change it here in one place we only have to alter the logic here in one place or you know any of other changes that we want to make and also we want to add another class another uh, motorcycle type so for example if I just copy this and change it to um, motorcycle Suzuki I'll change that it's as simple as that 
this will now be instantiated if we need it to be. Yeah, we don't have to make any changes to that code. And then, um, but just we can see here that we are instantiating a few classes that we, we're creating an instance of, I'll move that over there, of these three. So we can see we're passing in Yamaha first, which is this, then Honda, then Ducati. And just have a look at the output that <clears throat> results in. Yeah, we can see, in fact, just have a look at where that comes from. We can see they all implement, they all have a constructor method and it just dumps this, uh, the method magic constant for each one, which will just provide the uh, fully qualified name to that method. We can see it's inside the factory method namespace, the motorcycle Yamaha class and the construct method in uh, this instance. And then uh, the same for these two instances, but just the difference being this, the motorcycle uh, Honda class here and the motorcycle Ducati class here. And also if I add another instance, Change it to Suzuki. And then we can see the output that that produces here. Um, it's the same as these three, except it's the motorcycle Suzuki class this time that is being instantiated. There is um, a lot more information about this design pattern on the internet or about these design patterns. I mean, the simple factory pattern and the factory method pattern. So I've, if you found this video helpful, I would encourage you to do some further reading, have a play around with it, see what you can do. And yep, if you did find this video helpful and you know other people that you think would benefit from watching it, then I would be appreciative if you could share this video. And if you want more content like this and uh, more PHP videos about other design patterns and just other things to do with PHP, then you should subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.